Hello, hello. I'm sorry I skipped a week. I'll explain why after the show, but I want to get to the episode first. So let's get started. Welcome to the Lesbian Romantic Podcast. This is Worth the Risk, part 34. Cynthia. Who is Cynthia? Natalie put down the mug. She stared at the pink, foamy drink for a few moments and then sat back in her chair. Someone coughed nearby and she couldn't help but glance at the man. Was he sick? Why had he come here if he was? He could just have allergies, she reminded herself. Damn, when am I going to relax about this? Natalie shook her head, rolling her eyes at herself. She had come here to get some work done in a nice setting on the weekend. But as soon as she sat down, she was on guard because of how crowded it was. Covid effect. She mumbled and reached for her phone. Hi, you again? Someone said from her right side. Natalie startled and turned. Hey, she said, smiling when she recognized the girl. They had met last week when Natalie had stopped by for some takeaway coffee and had gotten stuck in a long line. This woman had been the person behind her. They had shared a table and talked for an hour, hitting it off instantly. You look pensive today, the young woman said. Can I sit down? Sure, Natalie said and moved her phone and laptop to the side. She closed her eyes for a second as she realized she didn't remember the girl's name. She only remembered that she was getting her PhD in Ghent, but was originally from Berlin. So, what's on your mind that's making you frown so much? Natalie shifted in her seat. I'm frowning, she asked and rubbed her forehead. Last time, you had just gotten that new job, the woman continued. How's that going? Natalie's cheeks reddened as she desperately tried to recall her name. She knew it was short. Sarah? Sonia? Sam? (laughs) <laughs> no, you're frowning even more, the girl laughed. I'm sorry, Natalie said, blushing profusely. I'm just trying to remember your name. Cynthia, the woman chuckled. Don't worry, I don't remember yours either. Natalie sighed in relief, her shoulders dropping. Good, it would be embarrassing if it was just me. Nope, Cynthia said crossing her arms and grinning. It's not just you. Don't worry about a thing, Natalie. Natalie's jaw dropped. Oh, fuck. She sighed and covered her face. Cynthia laughed. You're as red as a lobster. I know, Natalie grunted. So, how is the job going? Cynthia asked again. Natalie picked up the mug. It's Going great, she smiled, happy to be on safer conversational grounds. And it really was going great. She had quickly found her stride and had an excellent working relationship with her boss. That's good to hear, Cynthia said. She pointed at Natalie's laptop without breaking eye contact. Working on a Saturday? Yeah, Natalie said, smiling. I like to catch up on some stuff I didn't get round to during the week. Usually stuff that requires some more reading. Cynthia nodded and reached inside her bag. I get that, she said and lifted a heavy-looking book. I came here with the same plan. Two workaholics then, Natalie said and sipped from her drink. I guess, Cynthia replied and looked over her shoulder at the counter. The barista was still busy with the order from the large group that had taken up most of the chairs outside. I need coffee before I can start, though. I think it will be a while, Natalie grimaced. Cynthia turned to face her again. I guess you can update me about that American woman while I wait. What? Natalie asked uncomfortably. The skin on the back of her neck prickled. The one who bolted and then sent you a message like nothing happened? Cynthia clarified. Oh, right, Natalie said, swallowing hard. 
she didn't even remember telling Cynthia about Raven. She had clearly overshared when they had first met. Did you reply to the message? Cynthia asked. Natalie shook her head slowly. Good for you, Cynthia said. She crossed her legs. Her dark jeans were a little too short. How do you feel about it? Natalie stared at the visible skin between Cynthia's boots and jeans as she thought. I'm not sure, she said, mostly because she wasn't sure she wanted to answer the question. Cynthia was basically a stranger. Why did you decide not to reply? Cynthia persisted. Natalie took in a deep breath. When she and Cynthia had talked for the first time, it had only been two days since Raven had sent her that message. She had been unable to think of anything else at the time. But now, almost a week later, Natalie was able to forget about Raven for a few hours at a time. She had deleted the message so she would stop rereading it. She wasn't sure why she hadn't replied, though. Kim had asked her the same question numerous times. At first, Natalie had actually considered Kim's idea of visiting Raven in Atlanta. But the more she thought about it, the more anxious she had gotten. Why make things more painful by seeing each other again? It's not like there was a future for them as a couple. Raven had a life in the United States and Natalie had hers here. What were they supposed to do? Spend some weeks together every few months? That seemed unnecessarily complex and painful. Still, that was no reason to ignore the message. She could have replied and told Raven she didn't want to be in touch anymore. It would be good for both of them to have that kind of clarity. It would only take one carefully worded message. But Natalie couldn't bring herself to send it. She had started typing a few times, but she had ended up crying and erasing what she had typed. Giving up on Raven entirely was too painful. That hard, huh? Cynthia asked. Natalie blinked, shocked to notice her eyes were wet. She averted her gaze and tried to get a hold of herself. This was why focusing on her new job was the best thing she could do. She got too emotional when she didn't. You love her, don't you? Cynthia said softly. Natalie groaned, annoyed. Mm. Why did Cynthia insist on interrogating her? She had no right to. They weren't even friends yet. Natalie already had Kim on her ass about Raven. She didn't need a stranger from the coffee bar to make it worse. Cynthia raised her hands. Okay, forget I asked. It's none of my business. She turned and looked at the barista again. Natalie studied Cynthia's profile. She had a remarkably small nose and thin lips. Her cheeks were rosy. Cynthia's hair was cut so short that Natalie could see skin shining between the light strands. I'm sorry, Natalie finally said, feeling bad about her response. I guess I'm having a hard time talking about it. Cynthia smiled at her. It's just that it seemed like you needed to talk about it last time. Did I really? Natalie asked, frowning. Yeah, Cynthia replied. You shared a lot, and I get why. Natalie's cheeks burned. It's very out of character for me, to be honest. We don't really know each other, after all. I like to think we know each other a bit by now, Cynthia said, winking. I guess, but I feel silly, Natalie admitted, scratching the back of her head. No need, Cynthia grinned. She pointed at the barista. I'm going to check in with him. I think he forgot my order. Sure, Natalie said, nodding. She watched Cynthia get in line and then sat back, blowing out a breath. I'm not doing that great in trying to forget about Raven, am I? Natalie asked herself. Her phone rang before she could fret about it more. She was surprised to see her boss's name on the screen. Elise was always talking about how vital work-life balance was. And yet, here she was calling Natalie on the weekend. Good morning, Elise. Natalie said after accepting the call. What can I do for you? So sorry to call you on a Saturday, Elise said, sounding genuinely apologetic. I thought you might like this opportunity, though. Natalie sat up, curious. No problem. What would you like to discuss? 
She briefly wondered why they were speaking English since no one else was on the call. But she had already accepted that Elise preferred to stick to English when they talked about work. Maybe that was a work-life balance thing too. Sergio is sick, Elise explained. And I wondered if you would like to take his place on Monday. Natalie had booked Elise and Sergio's plane tickets for Monday, so she immediately asked, To Barcelona? Yes, Elise said, sounding excited. I think it would be a great learning experience. Plus, I can use the company. Sergio lined up six interviews on Monday afternoon alone. I need you to keep me sane. I'd love to, Natalie said, her heart rate up. I mean, I'd love to join you, she quickly clarified. Elise laughed. That's great. I really appreciate it. If you need to get back sooner than Wednesday evening, that's no problem. Natalie quickly searched her mind for any obstacles in her schedule. She had agreed to meet up with Kim on Tuesday evening, but Kim wouldn't mind rescheduling. No, that's fine, Natalie said. I look forward to being away for a couple of days, actually. Good, Elise replied. We can try to see some of the city. That would be amazing, Natalie said, smiling from ear to ear. Elise cleared her throat. <clears throat> I'm afraid I have no one else to ask about cancelling Sergio's tickets and getting you one instead. Natalie grinned. I will take care of everything. Thank you, and I won't make a habit of this, Elise said. For a moment, Natalie was tempted to put Elise at ease by telling her it wasn't a problem. But she hadn't forgotten about Bart and how he had kept crossing boundaries once she had allowed him to once or twice. I understand that this can happen now and then, Natalie finally said. As long as it's an exception to the rule, that's fine. I'm afraid you're right, Elise replied. But yes, let's make it an exception. Yes, I'd prefer that, Natalie nodded. And thank you for inviting me to come with you to Barcelona. It's my pleasure, Elise said warmly. You know better when to meet me at the airport than I do, she added, chuckling. <laughs> See you at 7.30 on Monday morning, Natalie laughed. This was part 34 of Worth the Risk. Sorry again, it took me an extra week to release this episode. Um, unfortunately, while I was working on it, um, Muriel's dad was admitted to the hospital and we were soon told that he wouldn't make it. So um, I spent a week at the hospital basically saying goodbye and then he passed away and then we had the funeral to take care of. So it was a it was a rough time for all of us, especially for Muriel and her mom, of course, but also for me. I was close to him, so yeah, that's why I was uh, why I was away. It's a bit of an unfortunate time <laughs> um, th that I had to take this uh, break right now because in a couple of weeks uh, I am taking a vacation, so there will be this episode and then two more, and then uh, yeah, unfortunately I'm taking another break. Um, it wasn't how I had intended uh, things to be, but yeah, that's life. Um, yeah. So thank you for your understanding. And a super huge thank you to everyone who has sent me super kind messages in the last few weeks and who has been there for us. And also thank you to everyone around the world who is supporting my work. Um, it means the world to me and it's what keeps me going, basically. I, I'm creating these stories with your help. So thank you so much. All right, I am going to start working on part 35 now and get it uh, to you as soon as I possibly can. I'm not sure I'll make the early release, um, but I'm gonna try my hardest. And uh, I will see you soon on the community, on Keybase and uh, this podcast channel. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for spending time with me. It's always a privilege. And I'll see you soon. <laughs>